Hey, welcome in everybody. Dave Solentano here with Guitar Tricks and our Wednesday night classes. Hey, let's quickly address that link for the curriculum because I already see some uh, roll in and a couple others. Peter have mentioned that. Uh, we put the link in there as blue and something about YouTube, they changed it or they got rid of that link. I'm not sure why the other links underneath there are working, but I talked to the our tech IT guy at Guitar Tricks, and he said that's what it was. It's really simple, though, folks. Just highlight the entire URL link there, the link that would be blue, but it's now black, and then just copy it and paste it, open up a separate browser, a separate uh, internet window, and then paste it there and then hit enter, and it'll open right up. I tried it, and it worked for me, and it works for some of the other students. So, Peter, you, you should be able to do that. Um, so if you can't, I'm sorry about that. Um, and if you want, Peter, if you're a Guitar Tricks member, you can email me at, on the forum and I could just send you a, a sheet later on. You know, obviously it won't be tonight because um, I'm doing a class, but that's that's the deal. I already uh, reached out to IT about that. So sorry about that, folks. And um Let's see, right above the line that says starts live. Yeah, Peter's saying work just now when I try it again. All right, cool. Good, good, good. All right, so folks, we're going to be working on blues guitar, beginning blues guitar week two of seven. Tonight we're on uh, the second week. Last week we did some really basic stuff just to get everyone started, especially if there's some new folks to playing guitar or the blues just showing you some basic open chords for the playing the blues in the key of uh, A we were in, okay? And then also uh, we worked with a little rhythm riff. I'll go over that in a few secs. Um, also too, I realized last week, sometimes when I play with backing tracks, the it muddies up the sound for some reason. It, it just sounds not good. So I'm not gonna play the backing tracks. So what I'm gonna do tonight, I like to play a little something. I'm gonna play a little blues slide guitar, even though we're not doing slide tonight, because I can accompany myself with rhythm work, like playing little fills and then playing some rhythm work. So check this out. This is sort of like Dust My Broom, the old Elmore James song. And uh, Billy Gibbons, ZZ Top did a version of it. A couple people have done that. And it's got a neat little slide lick. <laughs> Kind of like that. tune and that one folks this is also uh something maybe we could do some classes on uh blue slide guitar it's fun to do and uh, i've got this guitar tuned to open e like the allman brothers do a lot a lot of slide players do open e as well as uh like a lot of muddy water stuff is open g tuning eric clapton uh does some of his slide in open a which is the same as g it's just a whole step higher and uh the ZZ Top guys, when they did Dust My Broom, they did it in open D tuning, which is exactly like open E, but tuned down a, a whole step. We'll talk about that another night when we're doing some slide work. Um, and I did that with a pick, too. What's kind of neat about some of this blues stuff 
And we might even get into some acoustic blues too in a bit. And I see a lot of people commenting. I'll read those in a sec and get on with you guys. I did that with a pick. Um, it's sort of easier to play quick, but it's not as warm sounding. If I play the same thing with my finger picking, you'll notice it sounds a little warmer. So sometimes folks like to play with their fingers, like Mark Knopfler in Dire Straits plays with his fingers. He doesn't uh, use a pick. And even though it's electric guitar, it you know, most players do use a pick. Using the fingers gives it a nice warm sound. See, so check out the difference. Oops. So that might be a future lesson too. do a few uh, classes on some slide blues slide guitar and maybe even some blues acoustic blues. OK, let me go ahead and put on the other Les Paul that's in standard tuning for everybody. Forgot to. There we go. You folks don't need to see all my guitar collection in the closet there. OK, so everybody should be tuned up. And everything we're doing last night or last week and tonight, uh, you can do on acoustic guitar as well. So real briefly, let me just take a peek, Gander, at the comments here. Uh, do, do, do. Terry's cool here. Edmonton, uh, Matthew from Edmonton, right on. Joshua, underneath, if you expand the text underneath the YouTube video you're watching, a bunch of uh, text will open up. And there's some links to some guitar tricks uh lessons i believe and there's also a link to the curriculum we're doing tonight which is beginning blues guitar week two of seven okay and it's unfortunately the link for the curriculum is not highlighted in blue easy tap and print out like it used to be um my it guy at guitar tricks said for some reason he set them up with the link but for some reason youtube changed it but all you have to do is highlight that link that uh what the URL is there, copy it and paste it into a, another web browser and then hit enter and it should open up the curriculum. I, I tried it myself and it works. And all you have to do is open another uh, internet window. So hopefully you can do that and then paste it up in the bar up top where all the www dot in HTTP, all the computer jargon, internet jargon is. Cool, all right, cool, cool. So Peter's here. Cool. Thanks, Pete. Good, good. Action, action stack. Right on. Theodore. Cool, cool. Dennis. And then another Dennis. Hello. And then King 50. Cool, cool, cool. Northern Nevada. Cool. Oh, you got a new SG. Gibson SG. Sweet. Good guitars. I used to have one. I sold it, though. Um, Zane's here. Cool, cool. All right. Matthew. Nice. Cool, cool. Theodore's saying, yeah, the link to the tab's not blue. Well, Theodore, I just addressed that, so hopefully you can still just, like I said, highlight the link that's not blue, copy it, and then paste it, open up another internet browser, and then paste it in there and hit enter, and it'll open up for you. Uh, hello, a bang. Cool, cool. Matthew, relative newbie here. Is that a one, four, five progression? Absolutely, Matthew. That uh, dust my broom that I was playing was one, four, five in the key of E. So it was an E chord, A chord, and a B chord. Absolutely. And then Barry's here from Canada. Cool. David's here. All right. Cool. Uh, Dave, always been a little afraid to open tunings because I thought it would 
confuse me with the scale patterns. Well, David, it absolutely does change all the chord shapes and everything. But the advantage to it is that it makes everything, when you've got an open tuning, every note, every chord tone is in one fret straight across. And then generally the frets, two, uh, the notes two frets back from that chord tone notes also work. Um, so Dave, that's something we can talk about in our private one-on-one -on -one lessons. And we can also, if I do a slide class, a couple of slide classes with you folks, I could go over it in a little more detail there. Um, but it actually, the open tunings make slide playing easier, believe it or not. And it is a lot easier because everything's in a compact kind of square area. Everything's in one fret and then two frets back. You can play a lot of stuff. And of course, there's other areas you can go to, but those are like the zones I notice like Dust My Broom is in and uh, Billy Gibbons when he does the slide solos on Tush or uh, Dust My Broom. He's got those open tunings and he just plays all his licks off of the chord tone fret and then the fret two down from it generally. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, Joshua from Texas. All right, cool, cool. And then someone else, Dennis Radcliffe from Arizona. Hey, that's where I'm at too, Dennis, Arizona. Cool. Ed C from Florida is in the house. Yeah, Jim. All right, cool. So a lot of folks here. All right. And then uh, Ryan Durst. All right, cool. They, Ryan, I've been from West Virginia. Yeah, I haven't heard from you in a little while. Hope you're doing good, Ryan. Cool. And then Dave says we'll be back to one on one soon, waiting to hear plugs or ear monitors and amp shield cool yeah i always that's david was mentioning that he's starting to get a little ringing in his ears and that happens when we listen to loud music if you've ever been to a, a loud concert you know every concert's loud but you've been to a concert or a club a bar where they've got loud music playing oftentimes you come out and you feel like your ears hear the, the high pitch kind of a ringing sound it usually goes away within a day or two. Um, but after being exposed to loud sounds often for a long time, sometimes that ringing doesn't go away and I've got a little bit of it myself. So, um, but I just, after a while, I don't even hear it really. It just blends in and I don't think about it. Um, but consequently too, from all those loud years of band practice and concerts, now I wear earplugs when I go to concerts and when I practice and when I'm in my house here, I'm not that loud. I'm about as loud as the TV is. So there you go. All right, cool, cool. So let's get ready to rock here, everybody. Play some blues. So real briefly, last week we went over uh, open chord 12 bar blues and that was the week one. And I just showed everyone the three chords in the key, everything, oh, by the way, everything we're doing here tonight is in the key of A, and the one, four, five chords in the key of A are A is the one chord, D, D7 is the four chord. That means it's the fourth note or fourth letter up from A, A, B, C, D, okay? Oh, I forgot to tell you, there's math involved here with playing guitar and music, okay? And then the E chord, E7, is the five chord because it's five letters up from A, A, B, C, D, E. I know I'm just kind of giving you an easy way to figure it out, but that works. You can use your fingers for a lot of the keys they do in blues um, that don't have sharps on the one, four, and five chords, like the key of G, the key of C, the key of A, the key of E, the key of D. Those are super common keys in blues, and you could do figure out the one, four, five with your fingers and not worry about the sharps and flats. High roller discs, cool, all right, cool, cool. So we got the one, four, five chords, and then typically in blues, when you're playing the chords, you make them seventh chords, or specifically dominant sevens. So A7 was your one, D is your four, A7 is the five, and then back to the one. And then there's a pattern, a 12 bar blues pattern that we need to know and memorize and play, and it, on page one is what we did last week. We did four bars of the one chord. And I was just giving everyone a simple strum. So I'll play this real briefly so we can get on the new stuff. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three. No, 
out the four chords for two bars. Go to the five chord E7 for one bar, D7 for the bar, A7 for a bar, D7, and then back to the top. That's 12 bars. That's the simplest form. And having said that, there's some variations. And I also gave everybody, for example, two last week, the quick change. It happens on bar two. And this is very common where you'll hear the one chord for one bar and then they go to the D chord for bar two and then back to the A chord for bar three and four. And then on example two, I also gave a different rhythm instead of that open chord strumming, which is pretty basic, you can do on acoustic guitar and electric. I was playing it like a Chuck Berry type of rhythm, but with a shuffle feel. You're going to the D chord on the second bar. Two, back to the A chord for two bars. Two, three, four, D. E. Two, three, four, back to A for two bars. And the rest of it's exactly like we did in example one. So it's real important to follow that chord progression and to know it. Everybody wants to play solos, right? But if, you know, if you're by yourself playing a jam tracks, that's fine. But if you're going to play with other musicians, do yourself a favor and learn and memorize that 12 bar form, like the back of your hand, because when it comes to you play rhythm and somebody else takes a solo, if you don't play those chords in the right order in the right spot, the guy soloing, the person soloing is not going to like you because they're expecting it to go to the one chord, to the four chord, back. And they play licks. If you're if you're a decent player and you've learned how to follow the chord changes, that's real important to make it sound melodic is to follow the chords. You anticipate where they're at. OK, so that's super important. That's kind of what we did last week. So let's jump over to today, what we're doing today, blues, beginning blues guitar week two. Okay. This is going to be a variation on that rhythm I just played you. Okay. Now look at up here, the first example. I believe there's only two examples here. All right. We actually have three examples. I've given everyone a little turnaround lick too at the end, which I talked about last week. Turnaround licks always are really fun to play. And they also kind of break up the monotony of playing rhythm the whole time. And it's a good way to take the listener from the end of the 12 bars back up to the top to the first bar. Okay. So we're going to look at example one. It's the exact same order of chords as example two from last week. And we're doing the quick change in bar two. Okay. So notice that it goes not four bars of A, but one bar of A, then one bar of D. That's what we call the quick change. And then back to the A to finish out what would be four bars of A. We're just squeezing the D in there on the second bar. And then the rest of it follows the same chord progression. Okay. So this one, though, let me show you a variation. It's always cool to try to come up with other ways because otherwise, if you don't have some variations on your rhythms, every blues, it's going to sound like you're playing the same song all night. So that's important, too, is to be able to play these rhythms slowly, like a slow blues. And then we play them really fast, like a fast upbeat blues. And then in the mid-tempo, too. That also breaks up the monotony of it sounding the same all the time. The only thing that would really change are the words and the tempo. or And the key, too, if you do it in a different key. But it's the same chord progression, generally. So what we're doing here is a variation. So last week we did the really simple. That kind of rhythm. You hit it two down strokes on the second fret fourth string and the open fifth string. And then two down strokes on the fourth uh, fret on string four and the open fifth string with the third finger. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. 
forward. Okay, now let's take a look at bar one. And bar one actually gives us the new pattern we're going to do. And we're just going to play the same idea for all the other chords. Okay, so if we learn bar one, take a look at it carefully. You got two downstrokes on the A power chord. Okay, then we're going to put the third finger on string four at the fourth fret, hit the fifth string with it one time, and then we go back to the second fret. So right away, there's a difference right there. Instead of going two on each, two downs on each one, we're going to do two downs on the A power chord, then one down with the third finger added, and then back to the second fret for the next downstroke. Okay, and then the third beat, you're going to see the fifth fret on the fourth string. That's your pinky. Always play the open fifth string with them. And then we go after the fifth fret, to the second fret. And then the last beat, beat four, is the fourth fret back to the second fret. So all together, this rhythm sounds and looks like this. One and two and three and four. Okay, you might want to practice that a few times just to get the hang of it. Give me one sec, folks. Okay, so let's go ahead and try playing that example, uh, that first bar, four times, okay? So before we start trying to play a whole bunch of the song, it's a really good idea to take to learn a little bit at a time and make sure you got it down good. And this is another thing I notice with a lot of students, they tend to try to move too quick. I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna learn all this stuff and I'm gonna get it down. And what happens is they end up not really having any of it too good because they're trying to do too much. It's honestly, folks, it's better to have a little bit really good than try to play the whole song or a whole bunch of stuff. And you can't switch your chords in time. You're forgetting what comes next. Just take it a little bit at a time and be patient. Here, the big secret with this whole guitar and music thing, folks, is fall in love with it and enjoy the ride and just be patient and take things slow because it's a lot of practice. Trust me, I practice a lot when I'm working on something new and I do it over and over again. You probably get tired of it and bored, but you're gonna get better from it, folks, okay? Let me read a few more of the comments. I think Matthew's piped in saying, can I mix seventh chords with open major open chords or do they clash? Absolutely not, Matthew, in fact, if you're playing A major and you make it A dominant seven, not minor seven or major seven, we don't want that. Major seven would sound like, it sounds like a pretty jazz chord. We don't want that. We want just A with the flat seven at it. Absolutely, you can mix those up. Same with the D major. You can uh, play a D seven or a D major there. Absolutely. Provided there, because a dominant seventh chord and all the chords we're doing here tonight are all have a major third or implied major third. In fact, the, what we're doing tonight is just some power chords with adding the sixth degree and the seventh degree. So the third is being implied. Um, example two, though, we do have the major third in there. And we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get there. Um, so absolutely there, Matthew. Cool, cool. Good question, actually. Uh, Manuelito, saying that right? Hello, sir. sir. Um, and then Young and In the Hay. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm going to open mic night, and I'll be back in the next session. Cool, awesome. Well, enjoy. And that's a good idea, folks, is to go to open mic nights. And it's a good way to meet other musicians and to get a chance to play something. You don't have to play the whole night. You probably just play one or two songs with some other musicians that are there. And it's it's fun to do. I've done those many times. Uh, usually they're blues open mic nights because when we're doing the blues, folks, it's the same chord progression. So the bass player and the keyboardist and the other guitar players, they know the same 12 bars that we're learning here tonight. So you'll fit in like a glove. You'll fit like a glove if you've got these patterns memorized, okay? And then what you play over it, we're going to get into some lead guitar stuff in a few weeks, too, in this beginning blues guitar. We're going to talk about what scales to use, the blues boxes, etc. Okay? 
So, all right. New New Zealand. All right. Manuel Manuelito. Cool. All right. Joshua's here. Do we use an electric guitar for this session? Joshua, you can, but you also can use acoustic. Like I mentioned at the top of the lesson, everything we're doing uh, last week, tonight, and I think the next couple weeks, you can definitely do on acoustic. When we get into a little bit of the lead guitar stuff, which I think is on week seven, the last week is when we're going to uh, need to string bend. You know what? I think week five also we're going to do a little string bend. But yeah, most of this, though, having said that, most of this you can do on acoustic too. That's why we're doing this. All right, cool, cool. And then Stink Finger. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's blues and electric or acoustic or electric. It's both. We're going to, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to do electric guitar is my primary thing we're focusing on for the, this seven-week course. But in maybe a few weeks after this is done, we'll check out some acoustic blues where we play mostly with our finger picking, um, doing some blues. But you could do acoustic or electric for tonight, Joshua. And uh, Stink Finger. Cool. All right. Good, 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 good. All right, cool. Thank you, Stink Finger. Cool. All right, so we got the rhythm, folks. Let's try it four times. I think I got off track talking. Let's play that bar one four times. Make sure you got it down because if you can't play bar one repeatedly and without stopping, you're probably not ready to try to switch to the D chord and back to the A. But let's try four times on the A. And we're going to go with a shuffle feel, one, all down strokes. One, two, and three and four, one, two, and three, and four, and again, two, and three, and four, and you can let the notes ring, like a little bell, or you can pop you like this. And pop muting is a good idea to do when the singer's singing, because you kind of bring the volume down, That's that part. Let's uh, once you get the hang of that, that first bar, all we're going to do for the bar two is drop it down one string. And I know on the tablature, it goes up a string. You just got to remember in tablature, it's written upside down. I didn't invent that, but it's just the way tablature is. It's so that the higher notes, the higher sounding notes are higher on the page and the lower sounding notes are lower on the page. That way it corresponds with your, your, music up here. If any of you know how to read music, you'll notice that the dots that go up, they ascend, they go higher. And then when it goes down, you know, starts kind of making a descending motion, look, they start to go down. That's why tablature is written upside down. So essentially we're doing this folks. We're doing one bar of A. Then we drop down the string for D and do one bar of that. We go back to the A for two bars. Okay, now you might want to practice once you get the first bar sounding good over and over again. Just try to work on those first four bars. Okay, put that together. Let's try it like this two, three, four. practice it that's how we're going to get good now drop down a string in bar five six and seven and eight the second line we're going to do two times or two bars of d and then back to two bars of a okay here we go we're going to try that together one two three four one two three four And then I'll play the whole thing for everybody in a minute once we get done working on the parts. So 
that's another good thing too, is when you're learning the blues rhythms, try to just, once you get one bar down, try to focus on four bars. It, Cause if you think about it, the blues is 12 bars. It's three sections of four bars each. And it almost has like a call and response feel in each four bar chunk. Okay. Then the last four bars at the bottom here, this is where it gets really busy. You're going to do one bar of E, one bar of D, one bar of A, and then one bar of E at the end. So the E, we're just doing up a string on six and five. All right, there we go. Checking the tuning. Okay, three, four. Big jump down to D. Back to A. Everybody knows what that is at the end. That's those two vertical lines with the dots inside on the left side. Those are, re that's a repeat sign. It means go back up to the beginning where we saw the first repeat sign. And you're going to do the whole thing over again. And most blues songs just keep that 12 bar form going for the whole time. Okay. So here's the last four bars without me talking. One, two, three, four. <laughs> gives it a resolve because if we don't and just stay on the E because the E is the last chord at the bottom you know it's, it's in the 12th bar but it sounds like we're not done and this is a good rule of thumb for any song really for the, in fact any rock song country song almost always ends on the, the first chord of the song okay Cool. Just uh, reading the comments. Cool, cool. All right. Everyone's doing good there. All right. Notice, too, over the 11th and 12th bar. See, I put some text up there. What does that say, folks? It says, play turnaround here on last two bars. So the last two bars of the 12-bar blues is where most turnarounds are going to go. So if we take it from E, I'll give you an illustration, an example. And then... Um, we're not going to, I'm not going to show you it yet. We're going to do that in a few minutes. We got one turnaround on the second page as example three, but we want to do example two first, which is another rhythm that I want to show you. But a typical turnaround in A would be something like this. Or, Okay, those are all turnarounds we've heard before. They're very common. And we're going to do one of the popular ones tonight. So check this out. If you're playing the rhythm, the last four bars of our example one, I'm going to play E and D. And then instead of playing the A and E chord, I'm going to do the turnaround. Check out how this sounds. And the turnaround takes you back to the top of the song. That's why they call it a turn around. Flips you around back up to the top. So we got E, D, turn around. Four. And notice I'm always tapping my foot. That's keeping the beat. Watch this one more time. Two, three, four, one. Four. Four. 
Mark's saying uh, next week tabs for the turnaround. Uh, we got tabs right here on page two, Mark. If you print out the curriculum for today, week two on example three, back down here, this little tiny two bar lick, uh, turnaround. I'm going to go over that with everybody in a few minutes. But first, let's go ahead and check out example two. This is a 12 bar blues sh with the shuffle feel. It's a rhythm riff. So we talked about open chords last time, you know, playing the A7, B7, and E7. Okay, you should also be able to play those chords as bar chords, A7, D7, E7. And what's handy about doing the bar chords is that when you change keys, if you're doing the key of A, it's A at the fifth fret, D7 down the string at the fifth fret, E7, same as the D7, just two frets to the right on the seventh fret. Now, that little shape, well, the shapes of the chords, there's only two different chord shapes. The A7 looks like that. The D7 looks like that. Okay, I won't go over the details of that, but if you go into Guitar Tricks Chord Finder and put in the names of these chords, you're going to, uh, you're going to, it'll populate with a bunch of variations, a bunch of options, and you'll see these particular ones in there. The A7 bar chord on the fifth fret, it's the E7 shape barred at the fifth fret. And then the D7 looks like an A7 chord like we did back here last week, but we move it up and play it as a bar chord on the fifth fret. And remember, the bar chord's lowest note is the root notes, the name of the chord. So that fifth fret on the fifth string is your D. There goes your D, and then the whole step higher is your E. Now, if we were to change keys, this is really easy. You don't have to play a bunch of different chord shapes. If we're going to do the key of G, all you do is start with the G note, sixth string, third fret, and play the exact same shape. See how that looks? Just like the A, but back two frets. In fact, everything will be the same, just back two frets. and then it will sound like you're playing musically and melodically. All right, so let's check out the rhythm riff now. We, we talked about open chords, bar chords, uh, and then doing the old Chuck Berry rhythm thing. Or, you could also do that with your power chords, your root uh, fifth power chord on the fifth fret, A. Use your pinky on the ninth fret on the fifth string, and then you got this. Same thing we did last week. If you got a big stretch, this is what we did for example one. Like that. It's a lot easier for some folks, especially the, the beginners or just starting out players, to play in the open position because you don't have to do any big stretch. It's like one finger per fret. Once you get a little more advanced, because that stretch is from the fifth to the tenth. Okay, that's good to know too. Now, this leads us to example two. Another way you could play blues rhythms is to not play a chord, but play the notes of the chord individually, like make a riff with them. So the A chord, in example two, we're doing this. 
Okay, that's the sound of it. So let's practice that a few times to lock it in. And then we're just going to plug that little eight note into the D chord. And then the E chord will be the same up on the open six and then the fifth string. Cool. Let me catch David's comments. Like a glove, can one player use the quick change and another player not use it and it work? Uh, generally, Dave, if they're, they're going to do the quick change, everyone needs to do it together. And when we do, like when I've done open mic nights with people, we'll say, all right, we're doing a blues in the key of A with a quick change. And that just means on bar two, the band needs to go to D. It, it wouldn't sound good if you stayed on A and you went to D. Then you're going to have a cluster mess of notes that don't fit the D chord or vice versa. Okay. So, um, another thing too, this is another good cue at open mic nights. Sometimes some blues songs don't start right away with the bar one. They'll actually start from the bar uh, nine from the five chord. They'll go like, if we're in the key of A, they might go, all right, we're taking it in the key of A, starting from the five chord. One, two, three, four. You've heard something like that before. In fact, Eric Clapton's version of Torn Down, I'm Torn Down, they take it from the five chord. They go one, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's common too. Just some of these uh, terminology folks that I'm throwing out there. If you want to get better at the blues, you might want to pick up on this. A lot of times they give Roman numerals or numbers to the chords in their uh, position in the, the song. The one chord, the A, if we're in the key of A, A is always the one. The four chord is D, the five chord is E. And that's, that's good to know. So when you're talking to another musician, it, even if you change the keys, you can still refer to them as one, four, five. Okay. So that would uh, answer that question, David. And he says, how coordinated do you need to be during that turnaround? There are so many ways to get to that final five chord. Yeah, but just play one of the turnarounds. Um, and you'll sound good. As long as you get to the five chord, the whole idea is the turnaround because the last two bars, folks, is A and E, or the one chord to five chord. So you need to, your turnaround generally starts with notes of the one chord and then ends on notes of the five chord. And then in between those, you know, when you get from point A to point B, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can play scale notes to get from point A to point B, or you can even use chromaticism. A lot of the turnarounds do chromatic. They start with chord tones. Those notes are in the A7 chord, not in A, not in A, in A. And then there's your E chord. Or here, A chord, not in A, but the pedal note is not, and then back to this, and then or like a bass line. Starts with a chord tone, chord tone, not, not, chord tone. It's pretty simple, but that's the general idea too. Like that, that outlines a lot of notes in the A7 chord. Right away, every single note there except the five is in the A7 chord. A little blues lick with the blues note. Or, and just play your scale to get down to the, the E. You gotta end on an E, uh, the five chord root note, or the five chord. 
is generally what you want to do. Okay, so that's good questions, David. Really good. Dave's saying, I'm thinking about the case where the two court is thrown in. Does everyone have to go there for it to work? Well, yeah. I mean, the band needs to know what the change is. Absolutely. Like on Dave, on Andrew's lesson and guitar tricks that we're, we're working on, the bass player and the keys both play. The, and if there's a rhythm guitar, that rhythm also would play the two chord for sure. And Matthew's saying, should we be counting in our heads one and two or one and uh, two and uh, uh, Matthew? Yeah. Or just feel it. You know, I, I know I count out loud because I just do that for the students. Um, but when I'm playing, I don't count out loud, but I just feel the beats. You know, every every downbeat, every one, two, three, and four is like a, a pulse, kind of like the heartbeat. And I just feel it, and I can feel the subdivisions in there, like 16th notes, 1E and the 2E and the 3, or triplets, 1 and the 2 and the, that kind of thing. Yeah, no worries about the typo, but I get the idea, uh, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. So you, whether you count it out loud or count it in your head quietly – or just tap your foot or just feel it. You, the important thing is to feel it because when I hear the student playing and they're totally not playing the beat, that we got to work on that. Because once you get it and you feel it, you start to, you know, your heart and soul can get into it. Okay. So, you know what? Let me share something too because there might be some new, uh, some new students watching here. There's a super cool uh, series of lessons. Well, since we're talking about beginning blues guitar, let me see if I can get this link. I'm going to give. Yeah. All right. A little bit loud. Sorry about that. This is, uh, if you're a Guitar Tricks member, you can hit this link. This is beginning blues guitar level one. It's actually just called blues level one. And it starts out, if you're new to playing the blues, this is what you want to watch because Anders is the instructor. He goes over in detail all kinds of stuff, like what I'm talking about tonight, but a lot more detail. It's spread out over a whole ton of video lessons. And if you work through it systematically and don't cherry pick, but just start at the beginning and work through them all, you'll get a great understanding of the 12 bar form, some variations on the rhythm, and then just get into some cool licks. And I think uh, the blues level two gets into a lot more like the B.B. King style, Albert King, Freddie King, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, you can also do that, Matthew. Imagine there's a snare drum. You hear a snare going. Yep, yep. So let's get on with this because I want to show everyone a turnaround, too. We're almost we're kind of rocking up, rocking over the time here. Okay, so we got bar one as your riff, and just make sure you get the hang of that. In fact, you might want to just practice that four times just to make sure you can do it. And notice, too, everything we've done the last, um, in example one today, the last part of the lesson was all downstrokes. Now, if you look, the downstroke symbol looks like those squares without the bottom line or the open staple. And then the down upstroke symbol is what we're doing here. The down looks like what I just described, the open staple. And then the up is the V. Okay. So you notice on the riff, we're picking down, up, down, up, down. solid with the B. A good way to practice this too is with a metronome or some backing tracks, like find a 12 bar blues backing track in the A. And by the way, on guitar tricks in the toolbox, there's the jam station, which is a ton of backing tracks in all kinds of genre styles, um, blues, country, metal, rock, etc. I think there's even some jazz ones. Um, but get the hang of that rhythm riff. And then the D riff, you're just going to go down a string on strings four and three and play the exact same finger shape. And then we go back to A for two bars. OK, 
Okay, so all together, those first four bars sound like this. Three, four. <laughs> Make sure you can do that decently before you start learning the next part. When you're ready, bars five through eight is starting with the D for two bars and then back to the A for two bars. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> switching chords without stopping. Make sure we're not doing this. You gotta be able to switch. Not like that. You don't want to have a pause in there. So you got to probably do it a little bit slower. Like try to do one bar of D and then one bar of A and see if you can connect them without stopping. Okay, now let's go over to the page two. The top of page two is the last four bars of our example. We got the E riff on the sixth and fifth string. Same, same picking, same finger shapes, just up a string, same frets. Then the D, the D is tricky because we're going from E on strings six and five, and we're jumping down, way down to strings four and three. So you got to kind of skip over the A string and get down to the D. And then to the A. And in the E, we're just going to grab the E power chord, E5, and then just strum it, no rhythm riff, just like this. Okay, still keeping your pick doing the down ups. So the last four bars sound like this. Three, four. Get back to the beginning or end it on A. Okay, now let's check out. we got a few minutes. Let's nail this little turnaround here. This one's very <coughs> common and a lot like Robert Johnson. Let me get a little... Wet my whistle here. Uh. Okay, so turnarounds, folks. It's real important to know this. Almost always they start on beat two of the 11th bar. They don't start right away. So what I've done on the turnaround is I've sometimes what you'll hear the guitarist do is play the root note of the key you're in or the root note of that A chord is A, you'll play that on beat one as a placeholder, or you could choose to not play anything there, but make sure that when you start doing the lick itself, you come in on the second beat, because coming in on the first beat, it's gonna sound not right, okay? So the turnaround, you could either play the fifth fret on the sixth string on beat one, or it's easier in the, key of, in the case of the key of A, you can use the open fifth string. Easy breezy, right? And then we start the turnaround on ninth fret third string with your middle finger and ninth fret first string with your ring finger. So before you play anything, get those two fingers on those notes. And then all you have to do is pick the third string, first string, third string. Then you might want to alternate pick. Down, up, down. I didn't put the pick strokes. But just remember that, down, up, down, and then the next one, you just go back a fret. You don't have to change any fingers, just pull it all back to the eighth fret. Same thing, then move back another fret to the seventh, same thing. Okay, so you might wanna try practicing that first. Go one, two, Those are triplets. You notice, so the beat one is a quarter note. And then triplets mean three notes in the space of one beat. You can see they're grouped in threes, and they got that little bracket underneath with a three in the center of it. 
that means three notes in the space of one beat. So we go one, two, three, four. Okay, and then the next bar, we're gonna move back one more fret to the sixth fret. Take off your ring finger and put your first finger on the fifth fret first string. We're gonna do a downstroke, but look at, notice that there's nothing on the second string. You don't wanna hear the second string. So we don't wanna hear this, it doesn't sound good. So what I'm doing is letting, I probably should have put a little X on that second string, that means it's muted, but I'm letting the fingerprint of my middle finger lightly touch that second string. Now, I know everyone can relate to this. When you first started playing guitar, you remember how tough it was on your D chord to get that third finger to not touch the first string? Almost all the beginner students I've worked with, when we play D, they usually got it sounding like this. See that first string sounds kind of weird because my finger's touching it. If you stand the finger on the tippy tip, see that's what we want is pure clean sound. So in this case, folks, you actually do want to let your finger touch the other string, the second string in this case. So when you strum down, all we hear is three, two is muted, and then one. Okay? So you got it. And then the last three notes are pretty easy. Go to the fifth string, fifth fret, and go fifth fret, sixth fret, seventh vibrato it that's what that little wavy line is at the end right there okay that's the vibrato symbol that means to gently kind of kind of shake it like bb king would do or you see a lot of guitar players vibrato eric clapton's got great vibrato bb king for sure steve ray vaughn etc joe bonamassa that's a good practice too to work on your vibrato so all together it sounds like this One, to the beginning. So the turnaround's probably going to be the trickiest part for everybody. So you want to practice it extra special, extra time to make sure you get it. Um, and Matthew's saying the beginning of the turnaround should start with the middle finger on the sixth string. Uh, middle finger is actually on the third string. Matthew, the sixth string we're not even going to play, okay? We're going to play the open fifth string there. And now here's option two, folks, real quick. You could hybrid pick this. Instead of picking down, up, down, like this, you could pick down on the G string with your pick and then pick the first string with your middle finger, like this. And then when you get to this chord, the, the five, six fret, you don't have to worry about muting the second string. You can just pick them cleanly like this. Pick them together. Yeah, you're very welcome, Russ. I know we're gonna wrap it up here in a sec. So the last four bars of example two with the turnaround sounds like this. Two, three, four. So let me play it for you a little slower. One, two, three, four. So here we go. One, two, three, four. That's pretty quick. All right, folks. So I'm going to wrap it up here. It's been a great lesson. Joshua. 
you're very welcome. Uh, Theodore, everyone else, Russ, cool, cool. Barry, yep. Good deal, Mark B. Yep. And then Hank, Mark, we're going to do more turnarounds too. So join me next week. And the week after that, we'll get keep going deeper. I think next week we will be doing some more turnarounds. So what I'm going to do, folks, is use the rhythms we just did today. And in the last two bars, we're going to insert these other turnarounds we're going to be learning in the next week or two. And we'll use that as practice. Danny, cool. Appreciate it, buddy. Yep, Roland. Yeah, Roland. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, tomorrow, Roland, we'll be doing our one-on-one. -on -one. Cool deal. Matthew, all right. Appreciate it, Matthew. Thanks. Peter N., awesome. Appreciate it. Cool, cool. Stink finger. Good, good. Love the name. <laughs> the action stack. You're welcome, man. David, all right. Appreciate it, David. And King 50. Yep, yep. See you next week, Zane. Appreciate it. Another killer lesson. Looking forward to doing this, diving into this tomorrow. Yep. See you next week for sure. All right, everyone, have a great night. Peace. Keep them fingers flying and keep practicing, man. Just pick it up a little bit every day and work on some of this stuff. It's fun and it only gets more fun. The, the better you get, it just becomes a, a blast. So just keep practicing and stick with it. And feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one online lessons too. Uh, you know, several of my students are in this, uh, attend these classes too. Appreciate that. Um, but reach out to me if you have any questions. All right, everyone be good. See ya next week. Bye.